It's Okay to Be Gay, the podcast. So this week on our amazing podcast, we have a great friend of mine. He and I have known each other for longer than I care to admit. Our families grew up together celebrating many wonderful events in our uh, incredible lives over the uh, decades. And I'm so blessed to be able to sit down with my good friend, Charlie, who is here today. So Charlie, thank you so much for joining us on the It's Okay to Be Gay podcast. How's it going Welcome, so far? Charlie. Uh, first of all, guys, thank you so much for having me. It is wonderful to be here and to have a chance to tell my story. Uh, things are going good. Things are going really well. Um, I am in a good place today. Uh, you know, uh, when exercise had like my hour walk, Perfect. uh, and, uh, I'm eating healthy. I'm down like six pounds. So, good work. Phenomenal. Um, yeah, I, things are good. Things are good right now. Everything's going with y'all. Well, I have about a pound and a half worth of a Chipotle burrito that I'm going to mow down later. So I, <laughs> but I did get my, <laughs> I did get some exercise in today. Uh, yeah. But good, good, good day overall. Good stuff. <laughs> I've been sitting most of the day, so, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere that one glass of wine is equivalent to an hour worth of exercise Beautiful. during the day. Uh, mm -hmm. So I've had at least three hours of exercise, exercise. so far. Perfect. Good. <laughs> Great. I need to get on that regimen. Keep it up. I need to do <laughs> some more. Uh, some more marathon bottles exactly. uh, in my life. You and me both, let's have a marathon. That's that's the only marathon I'm interested I'm in doing. Yeah. I, I think after like glass number two, it quits being beneficial and then like it starts. <laughs> but I've, I actually haven't actually had a full glass yet. This is my first. So cheers. I'm sure I'll work my way through it I'm though hydrating. while we are while we were chatting. I do have my water also, Good so work. try to balance things out, but I can't promise anything moving forward. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Charlie, I, I know that I initially spoke to you briefly about our podcast and the purpose of our podcast and why we are wanting to put this all together and bring all these stories out for our listeners and for other people who might stumble upon them, hopefully uh, out there on the internet somewhere. And I just wanted everybody to get a little bit of your background because nobody out there probably knows you like I do and knows you like your close friends and family. So for those who are strangers to the person who is Charlie, I think they would benefit by hearing a little bit about where you came from and how you grew up and what is all of those things that you are bringing with you these days. Yeah. Yeah my bio so here goes my family we're all we're all situated in the dallas uh texas area my uh parents divorced when i was 10. um i have an older brother steven a younger brother ed uh and uh we grew up in a catholic house household um very religious upbringing very strict Lots of love, though, too. Lots of uh, games and fun times. I mean, I remember the time that uh, we had the uh, trampoline in the backyard and our mom told us to uh, take a shower and we took all the shampoo and some garden hoses and uh, <laughs> bounced on the trampoline until we were clean. So we technically, you technically... did do what we were supposed to do. <laughs> That's uh, brilliant which is probably the best that um that she could hope for my mom uh, who <laughs> raised us pretty so three pretty boys exclusively three boys three boys Excellent. um you know and a couple dogs too every now and again Perfect. Um, right. yeah uh i i went to private schools my whole life which is pretty fortunate um i got a good education and uh met some good people some good folks um, we changed schools a lot growing up, um, which wasn't always the easiest. And we ended up settling a Lutheran school for mm -hmm. six years for me um, and some time for Stephen and Ed as well. Um, 
So was your, after your parents divorced, did your dad kind of stay in your life or did he kind of separate completely and you only saw him sporadically or was he kind of like down the street every other weekend type stuff? Yeah. Um, he settled in an apartment about five, 10 minutes away from okay. where we were living. So stayed close. Um, we, we saw him, I think every other weekend mm -hmm. and every Thursday night. Um, and then we would take a month in the summer and be at his place and we would alternate, like, I think for a really long time, I, I think we still do it to this day, actually. Um, dad would get Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and mom would get Christmas. Yep, the holiday division. Uh, okay. Yeah. But he was, um, he was in your so life. He fun. wasn't, he wasn't just like out of there. Yeah. Um, he was there, you know, he was, he was very supportive. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, uh, it's kind of hard to talk about because like my family was loving and, and caring and they were trying really hard. Mm -hmm. right? right. I think that's something we can all agree on. Like our parents tried the best they could. Yeah. Um, and we still have to deal with the things that they did or mm -hmm. didn't do. Yep. I think they still mm -hmm. affect us and and we work with it to the to this day. Literally was um, just talking about that with some friends. It doesn't matter who, who you're back who you are, what's your background. I feel like everyone kind of has the, has those those wounds, if you will, that that circle back, especially in adult life, I feel like. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um while my dad was very supportive in traditional masculine ways, he would take us fishing or encourage us to do sports or go camping or things like that. Um, around the time that I decided I wanted to do theater and dance, <laughs> it was <laughs> it was a little um, not not that not the best, not the greatest. Sure. Um, and I think really my gay experience. Um, you know, I never really had people like, you know, I think physically beat me up or anything like that. But um, the 90s was full of like this very casual homophobia. Mm -hmm. um, I think growing up, there was this, uh, uh, I think on TV, the best um, example for LGBT community was the Will and Grace show. Yep. Um, which if you look yeah. back at that now, you're kind of like, oh, oh. Sure, exactly. No. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it a little bit. <laughs> I remember watching Will and Grace with my mom. Uh, that was our thing. We'd watch some TV show in the evening. Sorry to hijack you for a second, Charlie. But uh, when they re-released the new Will and Grace that, that came out, I watched it. I it's a funny show. I love those actors and actresses that are on the show, each in their own individual way. And I mentioned it to my mom oh, no. at some point. This is now after I've come out. Hello, uh -huh. Marion. And she, yeah, <laughs> she was less than enthusiastic about them putting that show back on the air now. Um, and I was like, oh, interesting. interesting. Okay. Noted. Carry on. Carry on. Anyway, just. Yeah. Uh, Marion. Um, but so sorry, Charlie. Go keep so, going. So so how we're was growing up in the nineties gay? Yeah, exactly. And you said you were getting yeah, into like uh, dance and theater and stuff. Was that in high school? Yeah. Yeah. So um around middle school, I think in seventh grade, uh there was this very cute boy who came to English class one day. Mm -hmm. The teacher had invited him, who I also suspect was probably gay. Uh, and he told us all about how wonderful theater was and how we should all try out for it and look at the funny things that I can do. Uh, I have a lot of confidence because I'm in theater and I was like, oh yeah, I want to hang out with that guy. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to sign up and audition for a show and, uh, I signed up for my first show, uh, um, which was. I'm a theater. I want to say the No too. Purpose Room. Oh, okay. Oh. It might have been Mash. Ah. We did two shows that year, uh, and it was the No Purpose Room and Mash. And I was the lead in No Purpose Room, um, 
now because I believe I was the fat kid and no. they needed someone to play the coach. Oh, yeah, you know, you play the parts that <laughs> you can get. That's very true. That's uh, true. <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, as a big guy, it's kind of you. You take what you can get. Uh, start doing theater. Um, I wanted to take dance classes, but my dad was like, "No, that'll make you gay." <laughs> oh no, that's seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Whoops. I already was. Oh. I, there were clear there were clear indications from the get-go. Like I remember a time growing up when I would um put on my mom's earrings mm-hmm. and I would tell my dad we need to have a 70s party and yes. just dance it all out. Oh my and, god, that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember in third grade, we had an all boys table and all girls table at lunch. And I would switch between which one I sat at clear, okay. clear indications. Like I was flamboyant. Mm-hmm. I was sassy. I'll send you a picture. I found, <laughs> I was scrolling through some messages <laughs> earlier, uh, looking for some stuff. And, uh, I'll send you this picture of me. I have to be like eight years old, but literally I have never, I have never been able to reattempt that level of sass again. It was <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> please uh, the please tell eye. me this will be able to be posted. I can't wait to see this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm an open book at this point. <laughs> I, so funny. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, back in high school, um, you know, kids are mean. Yeah. Kids are cruel mm-hmm. and they they figure you out real quick and then they if they think they can be uh a jerk to you, they'll be a jerk to you. Mm-hmm. Uh and I had been taught growing up that you turn the other cheek, that you um that you let people be mean to you, that you avoid or ignore your problems and they'll go away. Mm-hmm. And it works in certain cases, but it doesn't work in every case and I had some high school people who uh, would relentlessly bully me and they sat with me at lunch and I just took it. Mm. I just took the whole thing. Um, yeah. and it wasn't always about being gay. Um, but yeah, it was some, I think sometimes it was. So that's hard. Uh, high school sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you, do you think that growing up when you were in school that there were people, middle school, junior high, high school, that suspected that you were gay? Because, I mean, I knew you in high school and the thought didn't really cross my mind that you were of that inclination. So uh, I maybe wasn't <laughs> like, I wasn't really looking for it, to Check be honest. Your radar, David. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. I did better than I thought. Maybe I'm I mean, a I really know. good actor. Past um, is straight so for David. I, I remember the yeah, day, I remember the day that I figured out that I couldn't act homosexual. Um, I got fed up with my lock at my locker and I was like, ah, oh, fooey or something. I, you know, just real casual, like, yeah. And these, these boys, these eighth grade boys behind me were like mocking me and like using uh, a really homosexual yeah. voice. And I was like, holy crap, I can no longer be myself. Yeah. I can no longer Mask act or, that. Yeah. um, yeah, from somebody's going to find out. Hmm? Yeah, like somebody's going to find out if I keep this up. It was it was this experience of hyper vigilance. That's mm-hmm. something I learned um now through therapy is that like I was always on alert. Mm-hmm. I I was constantly self-reflective and making sure that I wasn't acting any way, speaking any way, looking any way. I didn't look at people, I didn't connect with people. I I didn't trust anyone and my friends, you know, I felt like I couldn't talk to a classmate, a teacher, a church member, uh, my parents, mm-hmm. my siblings. It was a really lonely experience. Yeah. It was really, I internalized a lot of that. It was very hard. Yeah. Um, and yeah. now I'm the opposite. I was just talking with a friend today and she's like, do you think the reason you tell everyone everything is because we're so long spent this time not telling anyone anything and i'm like mm, yeah. that's really good yeah that's because you should be my <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. like sign up no that's that's a impressive thing that you are able to um you know you must have a, a good therapist that you trust to be able to un- unwrap that 
um, you know, from your childhood and those tendencies, because I mean, if you had to guesstimate, like how long would you say that you kept up that sort of that internal, and you probably weren't even aware half the time or when it began, but I mean, would you say through school, did you kind of continue doing that kind of masking like after high school? Um, I didn't start coming out, really coming out until I was about 19. Okay. Um, and, um, at the time I was starting to work at the church, um, that I was attending in the early years of college. Um, and, um, I worked at the church for seven years and I couldn't be gay there. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, um, kind of this mental health episode that was not the best. Mm -hmm. Um, and I ended up quitting the job right before that and, uh, um, ended up finding some places that were LGBT friendly and better places to work. Uh, and I spent some time kind of building myself back up. And then recently I was been working at a a job at a factory, Mm -hmm. um, not the best place for the LGBTs either. So it's kind of a running theme for me that I find these places and just work there and make it work for a while. Sure. But like, mm-hmm. um, like I'm out to everyone that knows me. Mm-hmm. I don't hide it mm-hmm. anymore. Um, I, um, I, I, yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah. I'm just kind of like gauging, like, I mean, is it, was it something that, you know you felt comfortable kind of letting your guard down and letting people see the real you like you know towards the end of high school when you maybe started you know yeah and like how I guess that brings up the question when did you um like who did you tell first that that you were gay I mean um well the very first person I told that I was gay was my mom Mm -hmm. at 15 at 15 okay Um, and then she handed me some pamphlets and started talking to me about how I could start praying seriously mm-hmm. and maybe consider the priesthood and um, all sorts of things. And I went back into the closet yeah. for three more years. Um, but the first person I remember telling was this boy that I really... Wow, that was really scary. Is that a firework? Hopefully not a gunshot. I want to say that's a transformer that exploded oh my outside God. my house. Um, it sounded like a transformer from Dallas. It sounded like a firework <laughs> from Madison. I heard that 1,200 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. Not going to lie, I jumped uh, from hearing that inside more than maybe I did in, outside. But I was like, what the I was going to say, Charlie, that? you looked pretty calm when that happened too. It was like, I think. Yeah. Uh, was like, that happens all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, full disclosure, uh, I have some like mental health tidbits that I've been picking up from yeah. over the years. Uh, just today, we were talking, my therapist and I, about um, how I have complex uh, post traumatic stress disorder. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I work a lot every day to be very calm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, we're going to see how like, tonight goes but i feel okay like i think everything's okay but again i tend to just tell everyone everything that's going on yeah i i I just don't really care at this point well if it helps you i mean it um i i guess speaking from my own kind of personal things that um I don't do well when I keep things internalized either. And I find myself spiraling kind of to darker places um, when that happens. So um, I'm a very extroverted person and, and telling people and it's hard sometimes to find people that you feel safe, but I feel like inevitably I'm just, I I just get it out. I just get it off my chest, even if it's someone that I maybe wouldn't be. So I'm kind of with you that there's some, there's, there's a therapeutic, uh in nature to you know for certain people so i can relate to that and i love talking about mental health Mm -hmm. um i've been in and out of therapy for 10 years figuring out my life um Mm -hmm. and um i i wish it was a little more normalized i wish we could talk a little more openly and and share a little more friendly like about what we're going through because like 
if you and I were friends on the regular mm -hmm. and saw each other out in the wild, I would like to know, you know, the things that bother you mm -hmm. that I could help you avoid yeah. or we could steer around or whatever. Uh, and I would want you to know the same things out of me. Yep. Um, because like life is hard. Yeah. Life sucks yeah. Right. sometimes. And people Sorry, are coming. I and don't mean to be an evil. You know, I love it. I love it. Um, I really, really like that um, mentality. And as someone who has been in and out of therapy myself as an adult and as a kid even, um, it, everyone just needs to, to I, I like that concept of, of, and that's how I deal with my friends too. I like to know what bothers them. I, I, I want to know what, what, what kind of help they want. Do they want to have someone to listen? Do they want me to offer i'm always like first to offer advice but not everybody wants my advice you know and being sensitive to people yeah. like that so i'm 100 yeah. percent with you and i've been doing that much more with my friends and i'm finding my friendships are getting better and closer because of that so do you do you find too that sometimes people aren't ready for your advice yeah that maybe like what they need is that venting or a shoulder to lean yes. on more than like hey, this might be what's going on with you, or hey, like, here's, I, I found that sometimes what I was doing was reaching out to people too much mm -hmm. and offering too much help, because yep. sometimes people don't want it, they don't, they don't know yeah. what they need, they don't know Correct. what's going on, they're scared or confused or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've learned to that giving too much mm -hmm. of myself is not good i, uh, I need to let same. people come to me for that yep and i'm i'm, I'm getting better i'm laughing charlie because i got i get in trouble for that all the time yeah helping yeah. too much well it's like um, david and i are like, not like hey completely... what can i do for you like what can i <laughs> you're like yes yes the, <laughs> we relate to honestly, this 100 the phrase that i've definitely been, um the phrase that i've been kind of practicing with people that i try to stop myself if i feel someone's venting to me or comes to me with anything um, I, I say, do you want me just to listen or, and then I'll say, mm. do you, do you want my thoughts on this? Um, and in the flip yeah. side of it, I'll say to people, um, I have a really close friend that I work with luckily. And I'll say, Hey, do you mind if I vent to you for a couple minutes? Is this a good time? Or even if I'm texting her, I say, is this a good time that I can maybe vent to you about something and ask for that yeah. space? Because we're all overwhelmed with a lot of stuff in our life and we all deal with it in different kinds. So I, I really appreciate, appreciate your approach. And I definitely agree that I think if more people are talking about, you know, what they learn in therapy about themselves and how you can apply it to your relationships and friendships and romantic relationships, like everybody would just, I feel like be a little kinder to people. Like, you know, most people aren't out to be mm -hmm. cruel, but Sometimes it's a lot for a person to take, even if it's a friend of yours, you know, if, if you're not in the right headspace yourself, I've had to do that too with people where I say, I, you know, I, can I call you back later? Or can I call you back tomorrow? Yeah. And I just say, I don't need to always say I'm all feeling overwhelmed myself, but I just say, now is not a good time. Can I, you know, I want to hear your story. Yeah. Can I, can I do it when I have more time? It It's always appreciated when the other person understands the like, I don't have the bandwidth right now. Mm -hmm. I, I don't right. have it. And I'm sorry, but like, yep. I cannot help you the way you need it. Yep. And you would be further disappointed. Yep. Like, let's talk at a later time. Correct. Um, and um, yeah, I don't really know you, mm -hmm. but I enjoy what we've talked about so yeah. far. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Likewise. I would enjoy further conversations. <laughs> totally. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Veronica's pretty likable. Charlie's pretty likable. Yeah. Everybody here, we're all pretty likable folks, yeah. so, which is great. So Charlie, do you good still, <laughs> that brings me. Do you still live in the the Dallas area? I um I moved to Pittsburgh okay. uh, about a year and uh, some change ago. Nice. So, so we're closer than um, than we are to David. Oh, cool. I'm in Madison. That's, awesome. that's right. That's right. Yep. That's yep. right. That's right. Okay. Excellent. Um, Charlie, I was in. Pittsburgh actually a couple months ago and had I known you were there that would have been fun I was at was Elton, Elton John's John? concert mm -hmm. yep nice yep yeah that's awesome oh, it yeah. was an amazing amazing experience you know Hashtag Elton John 
Uh, more amazing <laughs> i took a long weekend oh. trip to la to see elton's very final concert oh, at dodger nice. stadium that was amazing <laughs> find Beautiful. it on disney plus it's live so stream there <laughs> worth it <laughs> i'm only halfway Incredible. through it because i can't keep i, I want to like enjoy it and if, i know if i watch the whole thing it's going to be over and i won't be magical anymore so i'm, I'm oh, slowly so working magical. my way through that veronica <laughs> anyway I digress. Um, sorry, Charlie. We got off. Ta- <laughs> we got off track here. No, you were. I mean... um, no, it's all good. It's all good conversation. And I appreciate it. Everything is wonderful uh, that we've talked about so far. But I want to go back to you were talking about. Um, you came out to your mom, mm-hmm. wasn't the maybe best received, and then uh, three ish years later, you came out to um, a friend. Well, I, I came out to my mom again. Uh, cause she okay. borrowed my laptop and was, I think, looking for some things that mm. she shouldn't have been looking for. Um, moms. but, uh, You're like, yeah. no mom, still gay. <laughs> um, I, I'll say his name and we'll decide if it ever matters. Um, I came out to Steven, um, okay. not my brother. You know who I'm talking about. I do um, know who you're talking about. And, uh, because I was in love with him. I had this huge crush on him and uh, just everything about him. He was blonde and he was muscly and he was uh, so kind and he had this great laugh. Um, Yep. But uh, I wrote him this love letter and oh. also a coming out thing. And I tried to find it because I used to have a hold of it somewhere. It exists out there in the world. Um, but I don't have access to it anymore. Um, but I remember, I think like the first line of it was something like, let's talk about the big pink elephant in the room. Uh, <laughs> and, I love it. Um, I love it. Also a good title for the know. episode. <laughs> the big pink elephant in the room. That's yeah, phenomenal. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and how did he receive so, that? He didn't know what to say. Yeah. Like, poor kid. I think this was um, the second time that it happened to him. Uh-huh. Uh, and maybe the recent past. And uh, he just kind of sat there. And then eventually, I don't remember what we were talking about, but I think he was like, I have to go meeting someone, uh, a girl, mm-hmm. and uh, I'll text you later tonight. He didn't. Yeah. Um, and mm-hmm. we were we were really fine. Um, we were still friends and hanging out. And then he, uh, he said something that really upset me, and uh, we stopped hanging out. Um, mm-hmm. And um, I think he's married and has a kid now. Mm-hmm. So, well, two two why. kids. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I looked him up <laughs> earlier. Because uh-huh. of what I was telling you, <laughs> yeah. research research purposes only, of course, obviously. Naturally. Uh, <laughs> so I guess also like so. Uh, did you have? Did you? Um, I'm not blushing, by the way. I'm just. My oh, wine's kicking in. Really, so David? <laughs> really? <laughs> no one was thinking here. anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, did you have? Did you go to any sort of college? What What was that like? I was gonna say, I hope he watches this episode later, and he's like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> I'm just kidding. Even, I'm sure you've grown a lot as a person, as I have, as everyone has. Exactly. Um. You admitted to a pretty shitty thing, um, (laughs) and I have long since forgotten and forgiven you for it. Um, I I don't care if you ever reach out or don't reach out, Mm -hmm. um, but if you do, we could talk. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, That's awesome, Charlie. Yep. Good for you. Um, So college years, go. Yeah. College years. Okay, so I... um, Went to Texas Tech University for theater. Uh, my father went with me, drove me part of the way to 
uh, Lubbock to help sign me up for classes my orientation week. Uh, I remember him trying to switch my major as I was signing up for no. classes. Um, yeah, uh, was not the best of times. Um, uh, I, I just, I remember a lot of negative things and I'm still hashtag bitter about it. So I'm going to share as (laughs) much. I'm going to do a little burn list reading. Yeah. Um, my brother was there and I remember reading something about, I had to audition to get into the college, which was for like the graduate program, Mm -hmm. but I didn't know it at the time. Um, and I was like freaking out cause I didn't have anything prepared and like what I, I had no idea that this was needed to get into school and it wasn't, but mm-hmm. I remember my brother was like, well, I guess your theater career is over before it got started. And oh, I was like, no. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Steven, rude. Yeah. <laughs> my family, Come on. I love my family. I'll always love my family and we'll get to them at the end of my story. But like, oh. Crack my yeah. family sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> anywho, so I I go to college. I go to college for theater. I meet so many gay people, so many lesbians, so many wonderful LGBT mm-hmm. members. Uh, and it slowly starts dawning on me that people here would be okay if I started coming out to them. Yeah. So I I started coming out to some church friends because I was still involved with church stuff early on. Um, and there was, you know, mixed response. Um, and then I started coming out to theater people and mixed response as well. But, you know, the cool people were cool and Mm -hmm. the chill people were chill and everyone else can go to hell. So there you go, you know? (laughs) Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Questions. I love it. I met, I met my ex um we dated for about six months um and he was this really positive wonderful guy um we still talk every now and again um but uh i was really going through it because i didn't know that i had like mental health issues in my mm-hmm. head i didn't start going into mm-hmm. therapy and sorry i'm bringing this up again but like mm-hmm. no apologies part necessary. of my life yep It's a part of my life. Yeah. If you cut this out, whatever. Uh, (laughs) So um, anyway, I'm, I didn't start therapy until the end of college. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know that what I was dealing with at the time was something that could be diagnosed and medicated and talked through and worked out and, and kind of helped with, um, my current diagnosis is bipolar one and CPTSD. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. and, uh, uh, it's made for a very interesting life. It's made for a very hard life. I don't care if everyone knows, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like, um, it's, it's not, I'm finding out more and more, you know, as the years go on, how, just how hard it was growing up. Yeah. Um, and uh, anyway, we break up because I'm not an easy person to date or mm-hmm. or be with. And um, I was spiraling for a while after that. Um, things were hard, mm-hmm. but the thing to remember is that I survived it. Yeah. Um, I... I think the best thing about being gay and growing up the way I grew up and living what I lived and experiencing what I experienced, and maybe this is cutting to the chase and should be said at the end here, but like, Mm -hmm. I am incredibly resilient. Mm -hmm. I am incredibly bouncy. Yeah. You can knock me down every time I will get back up and I will land in a better place. I will become a better person. I had bad news from my psychiatrist two weeks ago. I got a haircut you know, like I, you know like yeah. life will just keep trying to knock you down mm-hmm. and yeah. doubly so for our lgbt community yep. and the important thing to remember is that it does get better mm-hmm. it takes some time it does get better and you're not alone yeah you're not alone yeah that's exactly right that's that's so that's just perfect i mean 
perfect nutshell of a lot of a lot of people's stories and even outside of LGBTQ. And and again, that's another layer that just that just makes things more difficult. And I think I think you know, I wish it wasn't that way. Um, and that more people would be, you know, accepting. And I feel like we are getting to a, a, a better place in that. But I think it is important, you know, for you to to take take ownership of your of your mental health and of your struggles and, you know, realize that everybody has them and it's all, you know, no one's, you know, definitively worse off than anybody else. It's all it's all um um what's the word? It's all e each person's, you know, respective story. So um accepting that and and addressing those things I think is super important. And like you said, I don't I don't think enough people actually talk freely about it. And I wish more people would too, because it it is just part of our life and dealing with our past traumas, small and big, and and dealing with them because I don't think anybody realized, you know, you don't realize you're usually typically going through trauma when you're in it. You realize it after the fact. Yeah. And and, and if we need true. to talk further after the, you know, thing stops rolling, that's cool no. too. Because <laughs> like I'm just saying, like, I'm yeah. always down to chat about yeah, this. Yeah, no, I think I definitely just I like that approach for you. I mean, and for, for other other people, I just wish that people would have that sort of openness to talk about stuff because it's it's nothing that anyone should be embarrassed about. It's just, you know, if if you talk about it, then I think sometimes feel, people feel maybe if you talk about it, then it makes it true. And for some reason, if you deny things, you know, you deny your sexuality, then okay, then maybe it's not real. And I don't have to deal with X, Y, or Z about it. And I don't have to deal with the fallout or what people will think of me. And, and I wish more people would just just accept you know and love who you are um and that's great i really i like that that you've that you're open with your your struggles and and how far you've come because that's really really admirable of you yeah so charlie i know you you talked a little bit about your older brothers and your younger brother your older brother and your younger brother um what was their take on because as far as i know both of your brothers are, are not part of the LGBTQ community and are a little more still active in your family's uh, upbringing in their, in their faith um, and their practice of that. But what was their, uh, I guess, reaction or reply to, to when you, you know, when that information trickled down to them, I guess? Well, uh... I guess we'll start with Ed because I think he, I told him first, mm -hmm. um, or really he found out. Um, I logged did, did into. Did your mom tell him, or did he find out by himself? He found out the little bugger. Um, <laughs> I love. <laughs> uh, I was using Reddit at the time, and uh, I was um, posting on some uh, forums for uh, LGBT communities. And yeah. um, I had logged into my account on his computer and he snooped through my history Ooh. and mm -hmm. he found a love letter to Steven. Ooh. Um, so he knew. <laughs> so, David's wine almost. She's not even having a drink the at the camera. moment. That was impressive. Yeah, we almost ruined the whole episode. <laughs> David's <laughs> wine. <laughs> it just—it's so good, right? Oh, like my was, my so life dramatic. is so perfect. perfect. So That's dramatic. Perfect. I love it. <laughs> of course, I'm I'm a Leo. I'm an actor. I'm a writer. Like I naturally am dramatic. I play D and D. Whatever. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> if it gets more wine, <laughs> that is a sound of blast. Another hour of exercise, right there. Exactly. Hey, it's like twenty eight awards. This stuff's won. Okay. I just... Ooh, anyway, that looks tasty. That is barefoot so Ed blood. Finds out. Way. Ed yeah, no, it's out, delicious. It doesn't tell me, but we're hanging out with some friends that I've met through theater and D and D nerd stuff, and we're at B Dubs, and a friend of mine makes a comment that 
indicates very clearly that I am gay. I haven't told Ed at this point. I have no idea that he already knows. Um, no. So on the drive back, uh, he, you know, we talk about it. Uh, I was like, I know, yeah, I'm, I'm gay. Uh, you should probably know. <laughs> and he was like, oh, I already know. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I was like, oh, do tell. And he told me the story about how he found the love letter and how he was shocked and didn't want to say anything until I told him and yeah. yada, yada, yada. So, um, yeah. And then Steven, I don't remember when I told him, um, but it must have been before 2018. And um, I remember being at his house um you you weren't ever in Lubbock, so um, but mm -hmm. we we had a house that all three of us lived at at some point. I knew um, that, yeah. And uh, he uh, he and I were at that house in the kitchen, and he just apologized to me, and mm -hmm. he was like, "I'm sorry that I ever made you feel any certain way, and it was never my intention, and I love you very much, and I accept you." um and please forgive me um Aww. wow and um it was very sweet mm -hmm. very um steven's not an emotional person yeah uh neither is ed well anyway um <laughs> sorry in their, in their <laughs> i'm own a right. beautiful mess and maybe that's what the episode <laughs> should still be titled because that's great. that's just me I love uh, it. Anyway, uh, we're we're at the point nowadays where um, family get-togethers are not tense, mm -hmm. but I'm mm -hmm. always on alert for any missteps or anything like that. Uh, I went home for Christmas last year, and uh, my dad got on a little bit of a rant and uh mentioned how we all need to get through this whole transgender nonsense that's going on right now hmm. um and i mean the family kind of like stopped him and tried to get him to like realize what he said was not great yeah um, yeah I, I don't think he gets it i don't think he realizes that transgender and the rest of the lgbt people are like one in the same we're all part of the same community it's a together thing yeah right uh so i i find myself still looking for like sometimes permission to be myself permission to be who i am and and how i am and whatnot mm -hmm. um and i'm right now dealing with the fact that like my family kind of deals with it in silence for a long time i was really angry and it wasn't okay to talk about with me because I was so upset. Mm -hmm. um, and their attempts at communication were not well received because they were what they were. Um, right. And so now I live in silence. When I come huh. home, we don't talk about it. We don't mention that I'm gay. We don't ask if I'm dating anyone. We don't, you know, talk about marriage one day for Charlie. Like we, we don't talk about it mm. um and i won't live in that silence for very much longer i find yeah um i was gonna so... say that's still uncomfortable as much of uh, sometimes it's not your you know if your parents don't don't talk about it you know you can't force them to necessarily but at the same time like that's not comfortable for you to still feel like you're tiptoeing mm. around it yeah yeah, and there shouldn't be a reason that that's not as common of a conversation as maybe your brother Stephen maybe mm -hmm. dating somebody and getting married one day is like, you know, which I'm sure would be a totally normal thing for your family to talk about. And it should be the, mm -hmm. the exact same for, you know, you and your relationships or whatever to be on the same mm -hmm. wavelength, you know? I am just... A beautiful disaster <laughs> and i um thank you for your kind words yeah. um but it's um it's like i said earlier 
it is a lot better. Mm -hmm. The place where I'm mm -hmm. living now, the downtown area, which is like five minutes from me of this borough that I'm living in, mm -hmm. the main street has probably like 15 pride flags hanging from their windows. Nice. And it's oh, not just awesome. during Pride, yeah. it's all year round. Yeah. And it's not just the Pride flag, it's the updated Pride flag. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like houses in my neighborhood have all kinds of LGBT flags flying. Yeah. And um, this new job that I'm starting Monday um, is LGBT friendly and a safe space and i'm really looking forward to that um good for you and now that's exciting to have a, a new job that that you know is a safe place for you that's great yeah that's really mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry guys I, I i tried to be positive but i was like no, there I, is no like, you're good <laughs> there's that's... no amount of spin that i can put on this like <laughs> yeah life is hard yeah no, it's not it easy is. growing up Exactly. And I and I think that that's one thing that some some of the other people that we have talked to have seemingly had such a easy coming out story and they were so well re received by their friends and their family and like everything was just hunky dory mm -hmm. and it's not that way mm -hmm. for so many people and it's not that way for I mean everybody's family is different everybody's mm -hmm. friends are different and every individual who was part of the lgbtq community who has had to go through the process of self-acceptance and at some point deciding that they needed to let people in their life know about this it's not always an easy journey and it is rocky and it is ugly and it is uncomfortable mm -hmm. and it leads to and is a cause of many like future problems and issues that people have to deal with so I think your story is very relatable, Charlie, unfortunately, for so many people that they grew up in a household where this wasn't ever an option, mm -hmm. where it never was uh, something that they felt would be okay to bring up. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's normalizing the talking about it is is that's all we can do. Right. Right. It, it's, it's funny because in my days of youth ministry and my days of seminary and my days of, you know, working for and promoting the, 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 the church, uh, my, the conversations were always like, well, yeah, anytime that a young man thinks about a vocation or thinks about a career, like being a firefighter or a police officer or, you know, a doctor or a veterinarian or whatever. Like, why don't they think about being a priest? Like that should just be on the list of jobs that you could have in the future. And I think that my focus now obviously is a little bit different. And I, I want people to be able to consider the fact that it's okay to be gay. Like maybe you grow up and you are a homosexual person. Maybe you grow up and you fall into the bisexual you know, category. Maybe you grow up and you realize that you aren't comfortable, even though you were born a man, like you just don't feel masculine. You just don't feel like that is a good fit for who you are. And so you want to portray yourself differently. I I have a tough time understanding and grappling personally that the idea of trans, transgenderism and, and that sort of thing. But I also reckon, and because I just don't associate with that, but it doesn't yeah. mean that other people don't. And it, it, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that other people don't feel that way. And it doesn't mean that I shouldn't respect right. or appreciate people for feeling that way. Exactly. And so I, I've tried to really change my way of thinking to be more inclusive and to be more accepting, especially, you know, since my very young a life of of embracing you know myself as a gay man i mean i am so many years old and you know i've only been out and being who i actually am for a very short amount of that time um yeah so and i think that's what motivated me mostly to want to put this 
podcast together and to want to get people to come and, and share their stories was because like, it was not fair that I felt that way. And it's not fair that you grew up feeling the way that you grew up feeling and other people shouldn't feel that way. And so if there's anything that anybody, maybe one person hears a snippet of this, any one of these many stories that hopefully we'll be able to tell, and it changes their life to recognize that like, no, I don't need to grow up in the shadows. No, I don't need to grow up thinking that this is a wrong way of living. Like, I'll feel like I accomplished my, my goal here, you know? So <laughs> uh, my allergies are acting Yeah, up. I can um, tell, David, your allergies. You, you won't notice my, this on a podcast, yeah. but if you're watching the video, oh, yeah. um, Man, it's, it's the my, wine. It's raining. <laughs> my so weird. It's raining inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are the sprinklers um, on yeah. in my office? It, the thing is that, like... um we weren't as alone as we thought we it just felt that way yeah because we didn't talk about it what's that silver scene poem um faces of blue uh mm. masks whatever uh his face was blue hers was too they walked by each other and they never knew yeah um mm -hmm. like i if if i had known you know mm -hmm. if we could just have talked yeah i don't know yeah, no, it's 100%. It's just, it's just accepting, you know, we're all just people. So yeah, just let people be people. That's exactly right. Just thank let people for, be people. Thank you for letting me uh, monologue on your uh, podcast. And hey, perfect. that was why sorry. I asked you to be here. Yep. I'm sorry for bringing the mood down. Um, no, there's, no, no, no. In yeah. fact, I I don't feel like my mood's down. I I love it. It's invigorating. I mean, I it's it, it really is because you you it's it's breaking that stigma of of talking about these things, not just being gay, but the mental mm -hmm. health aspect too. I mean, it's it's talking about it all. I mean, it's you know, it's not oversharing. It's it's just sharing who you are. That's it. Yeah, I listened to another several podcasts and a lot of the hosts, a lot of people on the podcast have started to talk about their mental health issues and the, the, the help that they're getting with that. And I think that that's maybe one of the larger problems that we have in our entire society, our entire country right now is that so many people suffer from different mental health issues and there's not help available to them. And the help that is available to them, they don't want to take because it is so it's like it has such a negative connotation. Like, Oh, I'm going to a counselor. Like, Oh my God, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Like, no, I'm just talking through my sh Like, yeah, literally I have my, my best know. friend at work when, uh, you know, if she, ha if she goes to, um, to leave work, to go see her, her counselor, her therapist. And I always say, all right, have a good time. She goes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we just like kind of like oh yeah she told me she's like yeah i got this new therapist i was like oh awesome good for you like i i just love that we have that kind of at least between me and her because we're just both so open about it and 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 it's the same as when i take off to go to my physical therapy appointments you know it's it's just to, right. to help yourself and to keep yourself yeah, healthy we have no problem yeah, we have no problem talking about our, our physical bodies mm -hmm. and going to therapy and going to the doctor to get a shot for this or put cream on that or whatever else. But when you start talking about people going to a, a therapist or psychiatrist or psychologist yeah. or counselor or whatever, it's like, oh, what's wrong with you? Yep. I'm a little bit crazy. <laughs> Let me tell Mind you. Your damn business. Number one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Or I don't know yet, oh, but I'm going to find it out. I mean, it's right. Yeah, no, it's great. There was nothing. No, Charlie, there was nothing like, I mean, it, you obviously had your share of struggles, you know, getting to where you are. But, you know, there's there's nothing wrong or nothing to hide about that. And not everything's going to be happy and smiles and sunshine. I mean, geez, it's it's just you have to go with those. Like you said, that that resiliency is so important. And and I I wish everyone could learn how to how to bounce back like like you can i mean it's it's not easy but you just gotta keep going that's it a hundred percent thanks guys um, i think 
I had so much fun. Please have yeah. me again. Yeah. Uh, no, I I don't know how to end these things. No, um, you're good. I got a burrito that's uh, no. calling my name. <laughs> <laughs> No. There's no end to this, Charlie. It's just until next time. Yes. Um, but no, your your story was amazing. And I I hope that you continue to embrace who you are and to share who you are with other people because mm-hmm. the, the it I mean I, it's important. It's so important. I, I know yeah, it is so important. And other people I look back at the time that I spent teaching and the various and sundry students that I worked with. I, I mean, collectively, I probably taught for 10 years. And during that time, I volunteered doing youth ministry. I was a youth, a youth minister. I was in seminary for multiple years. And at any given time during that period, I look back at those individuals whose lives I touched. And I think I made a difference. I think I made a positive difference in their lives. But there were so many other people that were that perfect shining example of like a xyz individual role model for them and then there was me who was secretly you know gay and had i had the courage to or the ability to and i think in a lot of situations it was more the inability as in Mm -hmm. i would have been asked to no longer participate had i shared that side of me uh in any one of those different places that i taught or volunteered but had I had the opportunity to share my authentic self, which I now am doing, I know that there were dozens and dozens of young people out there who are in the same boat that you and I both were in, Charlie, in our our families and our lives and in our churches and our work situations. And they would have been so glad to know that they were not alone in that journey that there's someone else who had been through those exact same things that they're going through and Mm -hmm. felt those exact same things that they could and they would have had somebody maybe to share that with to talk about those feelings with and i'm by no means advocating for people to become gay or lesbian if they're not gay or lesbian uh but also like if you are of a certain feeling in your sexuality, like you should be able to live that. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be something that you have to hide. And it shouldn't be something that you feel ashamed about. No, it doesn't always fit within the cookie cutter mold that your family thinks that everybody should come out of. And for those of you who are of a certain religious background, there is always a stigma of being gay or feeling outside the the normal box that so many people are in, but there's nothing wrong with you mm-hmm. being that way. It is not, um, I mean, it's, it's not a crime to be mm-hmm. a gay person. Um, it's not a crime to be somebody who feels non-binary and like we shouldn't be made to feel that way Mm -hmm. you know absolutely exactly you you said it all you said it perfectly (laughs) um and i think your podcast will do exactly what you want it to do um and i think it'll reach exactly the people it needs to reach and i i hope that it is incredibly successful i hope that it's wildly successful and i hope that um that it it does what you want yeah i think it will well it's all it's well, thank you Charlie. people like you charlie that 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 will be that be that uh that springboard right so we appreciate you being on here too and being authentic yeah we couldn't do this without our amazing uh guests who come on to share their stories it would be really exhausting listening to me just talk about myself mm-hmm. for hours and it, hours on it, it so be. i'm really glad that <laughs> i'm really glad uh charlie that we we have people like you that can come on and talk about yourselves um for all of you out there listening i i hope that you are able to take something away from charlie's story and are able to grow from that i know there is wisdom in the things that he shared. So for Veronica, Charlie, and myself, thank you everyone out there listening. 
We appreciate you. We recognize you and we love you. And we will see you on our next episode of the It's Okay to Be Gay podcast. Bye. Bye, friends.